Okay, here we are ready to uh, cut uh, some tails on the, uh, the drawer sides. It's about a four inch wide piece of white birch. You can see I've got uh, two full tails and two half tails marked out here. And I, instead of sawing these by hand, I do do the uh, pins by hand, but the tails I find is just easier to square them up using this jig, simple jig with a bandsaw where I have, I've made a sliding table from my bandsaw, and then this 10 degree angle piece, which slides on the back, which I can then position to uh, hold the drawer part perfectly at that angle, and then just slide it forward into the bandsaw. So I'll illustrate here. Wrong. Leaving the mark, slide over, the next one. The virtue of this is they come up perfectly square, up and down. Okay, there's the three that way, and then slide over. Flip the piece, cut the other side. Here we are in the shop on a Saturday morning after a nice little snowfall. We're making um, five drawers for the new butternut uh, sideboard project. I thought I'd just show you all the process here briefly. If you look at the workbench, you can see I got six chisels out here. My Japanese saw, two squares, a, a, an angle gauge, a block plane, a dovetail marker, a knife, and a marking gauge, as well as my scraper and my uh, Veritas hold down, bench hold down, which is fabulous. Um, I've taken to using a, pro a process that even a lot of really experiences, this is Mike Pekovich and fine woodworking, but I, Chris Bexford also uses this, I learned, and probably many others, because it's just, it's a wonderful technique where you, instead of trying to mark, I'm making half blind dovetails here, I've already cut the tails in the side of the drawer. This is a piece of white birch, and I'm gonna uh, mark uh, the front, which is a piece of three quarter inch bird's eye maple for these half blind pins. So I put a piece of tape on it, uh, after running the marking gauge on there to mark the depth of the dovetail, now I'm gonna drop it down and put it in the workbench, lay it on here, register it against the workpiece, thusly, right up against the edge of the tape. I forgot my most important thing in my glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. So you take a box cutter, knife, sharp, very sharp knife, line it right up on the, the bottom. So this is a case where the drawer side and the front are different widths for reasons that I'll sh explain later. You get that perfectly registered so the back is uh, against the back of the drawer and then you just slice out, mark the tape with the razor knife, very carefully. You don't want this to waver off or you'll have a cut. And then I've got to mark the top here. And then you pick out the pieces of the tape, which, where you're going to saw and chisel out the, for the tails, thereby make the pin. So you just pick that out. There we go. Now, the beauty of this instead of marks is that you will, then you know that you want to leave all the wood that's blue. 
and saw out the the wood that's not covered by tape. So you will then do that. So we'll put that out. I have to mark it down. Saw it from this way. Pencil, a little square. We'll mark down to the lines. We have a marking gauge line across here that uh, we will saw to, and you know, we'll cut like this down on these marks and then chop out the waste. Okay. Okay, we're chopping out the waste here after having sawed to the marks. Um, I've got a little tricky one here where I need to, I actually had to file back a quarter inch chisel to even a smaller size. So you chop down and you pair out the waste from the end. I've got the middle one done and I need to cut this one here. So it's just kind of fussy at this stage. Got chop and then pair to the mark on the end. Out comes the waste. They call it, I guess, I think a fantail chisel or something, which is really just excellent for poking around in the back corners of these half blind dovetails and paring out little corners of waste. So I use this a lot here. Get this one here better. This is bird's eye maple, of course, is not. The easiest thing to work in because it's highly figured and twisty grain so you have to have very sharp tools so I did sharpen my, all my chisels I started this certainly worthwhile here we go yeah coming out nicely if you leave the tape on the end you can actually see if you saw just shy of the tape you can then tear precisely to the tape and you have the perfect joint then. That's what I'm doing here. So I've got my little line there. It's hard to see probably on the camera, but they're pairing it down to the marking gauge line. <laughs> 